Hey guys, what's going on? This is Helix, and this is just a quick video to show some of the features of my plugin called TravelPad. Uh, this plugin has been around for quite a while, but I haven't had the time to make a video for it, and I uh, figured I'd take uh, some time kind of rewriting this whole description and putting up some new links and stuff like that, and the whole new uh, restructure of it coming out. I figured I'd go ahead and take the time to make a video. So, here that is. Um, this video is more geared towards server administrators showing off some of the features and how players of your server will end up using this. Um, I might make a player based video as well just showing you how to create it, but uh, that's not as necessary seeing, seeing as it's pretty easy to explain. Um, so anyways, um, I do have travel pad up here and we'll go ahead and hit download download the latest version which at the time of this video is 1.8.2 it may be a different version in your uh, by the time that this video you're watching this video I'm just going to drag it into the plugins folder of my bucket server go ahead and start it up and I'll connect host okay <laughs> so as you can see, this world has never been used for testing or anything like that before. Um, but anyways, basically, the way you use travel pad is every player is allowed one pad. And you just simply go out and you create it like so. What we'll do is we'll place a block of obsidian down and place four bricks around it. Now, what you have right here is the shape of a travel pad. Um, if you create it like this, you will need to like just right-click it and then the travel pad will be created so and then you just type slash travel pad name we'll just call this one helix which is my name um, if you're the way that uh, my server uses these this plugin is that uh, it's a PvP server and griefing is allowed so every player still has one travel pad but you want to keep the name private is more of like a uh, like a password of sorts so that only um, other players who know your travel pad's name can get to your area because you wouldn't want like griefers and stuff in your area so um, we usually make people keep it secret but of course it's your server you can do whatever you want you can you know uh, just have a list or something which I'll go over later there's an API so you can make all kinds of commands to hook into travel pad and just customize the hell out of it um, so there's a travel pad if we want to know what it's called, we do slash travel pad identify, or just the shortcut, which is slash i. So we're at the pad name Helix. And what I'm going to do real quick is give myself permission to, and I don't have permissions installed. That would probably be helpful to get permissions. Um, I'll go ahead and download this just to show you how permissions work, because there is permissions for having more than one um, travel pad. I think right now it's just using op based permissions. So it's not exactly the greatest way to show that. Um, copy over permissions X. Reload. And what I'm going to do is type um, pex user helix add travel pad dot max dot two. So now I have, instead of just being able to have one pad, I have two. And also, if you notice, when you build it like this and then place the obsidian, it automatically registers it. Otherwise, you have to right-click it just to get it to kind of register, register, register that there's a travel pad there. Travel pad name, two. All right, so now we have two. Um, time set zero. And... Um, the way you can teleport from one to another is you just type slash travel pad, assuming you know the name, of course, um, TP, or teleport, if you want to do it the long way, Helix. And we have been teleported to the other pad. Um, now, that's pretty simple, the way that it's, this is just the default installation. Um, it Basically, that's all there is to it. You can also delete your pad, so let's say travel pad delete I want to delete number two so we'll delete it by name number two it's deleted and we can also just delete it by hitting the obsidian or breaking the obsidian in the middle and what's different about breaking it is that anyone who
who comes across your travel pad can break it by hitting the obsidian. So say like that prevents um, abuse, like someone coming into your base or something in like a PvP server and building one, and then the players whose base it is cannot even get rid of it. So you're allowed to break it even if it's not yours. You just come across it or something like that. Um, th uh, of course, there are options for that. Um, so let's build another one over here. And right click. What is going on with the time? <laughs> Travel pad name or ends the shortcut. Uh, we'll name this A. Very descriptive. And um, now let's go through some of the configuration options. Right now I want to mention that there is not a configuration option for um, players being able to delete any pad they come across. But I'm about to add that and release that version. So, oops, hope no wrong file. Config.yml. So here's where all the server administration thing takes place. Um, there are some teleportation options that um, a user might have to be subjected to before they teleport. So he, the first one here is called require item. We'll just set that to true to show you how it works. Um, basically, that means that when a player teleports from one pad to another, I'll make another one so that we can do some teleporting. Um, travel pad name B. And, oh, I forgot to mention that you cannot teleport to a travel pad unless you're on a travel pad. So travel pad TPB, you have to be standing on one. Um, and the reason I did that was because this plugin was originally developed, as I said, for a PvP server. And so, um, instead of using just random commands to like warp out a battle or something like that and abuse the system, you have to be on your own travel pad or any other travel pad for that matter to TP travel pad TPB. So then it works like that. Um, so I'll stop. Um, so require item means that you have to have a certain item in your inventory in order to teleport. Right now the item ID is 368 by default, which is an ender pearl. And I'll show you how this works. Travel pad TP B. So it says teleportation requires you to have one ender pearl. So this is more like a like a little key for you to have in your inventory in order to teleport. So now if we try it, travel pad TP B. Oops. Did I do something wrong? Oh that's an eye of ender, of course. Da da da. Ender pearl. Travel pad TPB, and now we're able to teleport to one from one pad to another. Um, additionally, no, that's going to annoy me this whole tutorial, but whatever. Um, we can do take item, which means that uh, the item will be actually taken out of the inventory like a charge. So if we do that, reload travel pad TP, what was it, A? and an ender pearl has been charged for travel so it actually it requires it and it also takes it out of your inventory like a price to pay when you teleport um yep 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 the rest of it is basically um economy based stuff it does hook into vault and any other economy plugin that you want to use and so to demonstrate that i'll just download vault here and bose economy although you can use economy you can use um whatever it is i can't even remember <laughs> most of the other ones, but it's like, uh, what is it, yeah, multi-currency, mine economy, iconomy, e-wallet, econ, XP, currency core, craft economy, any of those that you want to use um, are supported by my plugin. So all you have to do is download Vault first, and that will be installed to the server, and then Bose Economy, where to go? There it is. Uh, so we'll also install that. Reload. Console. Reload. And now, if we go back to our um, configuration options, we can also do a like an actual money charge for teleporting. So we'll set this to true, and we'll leave it at ten. And right now, I have ten a hundred coins. But if I do travel pad TP A, oops, forgot that I had that on. Travel pad TPA. So an ender per has been charged for. Tra oh, I forgot to do. What did I forget? Oh, figured out what it was. Um, by default, um, there is a permission called uh, travel pad dot no pay. Like that, and I just went searching for why it wasn't working in the code, and I realized that that was uh, a permission that I had by default because I was op. 
So now that that's disabled, I should be able to travel pad, TP, and I changed the name. Sorry about that. Up. Oh. Pex user helix add travel pad dot teleport. Now I'm missing all these permissions that I had before. Travel pad TPX. And I need an interpol, of course. Travel pad TPX. And you've been charged 10. Um, so now I have 90. And also, um, I went ahead and while I was looking for what was going on there, um, there's charge on creation true and re uh, refund on deletion true. So now when I create a portal, it'll charge me 30 coins. And if I delete a portal, it'll charge me, or it'll refund me 10 coins. So if I delete this one, I'll get 10 coins back. Or you could just set that to 30 as well, so the person gets a full refund. But this is just to stop people from, um, like, moving them all the time, because they do lose a certain amount of money when they do so. Um, so we'll do that one. And also, I want to show you guys what happens when... Uh, travel pad picks user helix and travel pad dot create okay so we're charged 30 con um, and then we'll just not name it for now and I'll show you the expiring because it does expire which uh, is nice because these things are really small as you can tell and they don't clutter your map even if they are left unattended um, if you notice when I delete them they are completely on it uh, excuse me they are deleted the actual physical pad which makes it nice and easy for server admins to delete things that have going around and searching for blocks and stuff like that um, I'll create one more and do slash travel pad and B and also they do have protection built in so I could do all that I wanted until you're getting in the way of a travel pad and like here can't do that because a person would be teleporting there and um, it does have like a small protection radius around it you can't break any parts of the travel pad except if you wanted to break that and you just go ahead and delete it um, at which point obviously the protection sphere is disabled so that's pretty much it it does save to a very small flat file system which I'll show you right here actually I'll have to reload it um, it's nothing you should ever have to touch unless oh yeah I delete it all I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, travel pad name a so now here we have pads it's just stored in a small flat file system it just goes the name, uh, X, Y, Z, world, and the user who made it. So unless a player has forgotten their travel pad name, you should never have to fool around with it. It's just basically for um, the plugin storage use. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this plugin, just um, leave a comment or something on the video or on my uh, bucket dev page, which is at, uh, oh, I just lost it. Um, it's at uh, dev.bucket.org slash server dash mods slash travel pad. So as soon as this finishes loading, I'll be able to show you guys that. And of course, I'll put a link in the description. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, concerns, one more thing I wanted to point out if it loads. I think this is my internet connection because it's being slightly slow today. Um, it does have an API, so you can access that, uh, the documentation from here. Uh, things like the manager, so you can get all the pads from a certain player. Like I said, if you wanted to get, um, make a plugin to um, list, make players able to list all the uh, available pads, you could easily do that with here. You just go like um, get pads and then send them, send the player a list. So that's all available through the API. Of course, the source is on GitHub. So you can view that here. And um, I will put up a um, example API implementation. So yeah, if you guys are interested in that, just check it out on this page. See you later.